That's right. We are right here at Sharp Facets Gallery. It is 9.09 in the morning, folks, and hey, i got a treat for you. We have Sarah Cunningham. She is a park ranger at the 96 National Historic Site. She comes out of St. Louis, all the way down here by a very trip to get here, and uh, it's really, really nice to have you here, Sarah. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, um, you are an interpretive park ranger? That is correct. What do you interpret, Sarah? Um, I interpret the Revolutionary War at 96. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the, uh, there's a long, kind of varied um, history at 96 um, in that area. And so we talk about um, the, the colonists that lived there, um, their interactions with the Native Americans, and primarily the Revolutionary War. Um, there was several battles at 96 um, during, the, during the Revolution. So, um, so I talked to visitors. So you're trained on how to bring this to life. Yes. Yes, would yeah. that be a good way to say that? That would be. Excellent. <laughs> Well, you know, you you're, you said you're originally from the Midwest. You grew up where now? Um, I grew up in a small town um, called Warrenton. Um, it's about 50 miles west of St. Louis. Um, so, it, the town I grew up in was a little bit larger than the than 96 today. Um, so I'm 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 kind of used to this the small smaller town feel. But sure. But uh, what what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, you know I. I didn't really know specifically until I got into high school and early college, and that's when I knew that I wanted to be a park ranger. Um, and that stemmed from a love of history, from um, you know my family being very into uh, history, as well as um, we took lots of vacations when I was younger, and we went to national Back parks. Back in the good old days, <laughs> we used to have vacations, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Yeah, we, we just took off for a couple of weeks in the summer and, and hit a bunch of national parks. and. Um, back then I was a little bit, um, I was shy. Right, you were? <laughs> but, <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and then, you know, I had some really great history teachers and started working at Wilson's Creek National Battlefield um, and while well, I was working on my undergrad degree. And that's, that's when I knew I wanted to continue down the path of being a National Park Ranger. That's pretty cool. That yeah. is pretty cool. You know, I think, um, I think as we look ahead in life, sometimes it's a very good idea to look back from where we came from. Mm -hmm. And I think the, right. the park services certainly do a, a big a big part of that. Now, how did you get, let's see, you went to a school at UNCG, mm -hmm. which is in uh, North Carolina, University of North Carolina at Greensboro, a, a very big complex. I went there, I was uh, a, few, a few years probably before you went there, so uh, there you go. But uh, Tell us a little bit about being there. What was? Why did you go to uh, UNCG? Well, um, I went to UNCG because I um, had been doing research on a lot of different schools that I, w I wanted to go to, and they had a program that was um, one of the top ones in the nation. And, um, I, you know, I, I really in enjoyed the feel of the campus I visited. Um, it's one of the few schools that had the type of program yes. you were interested in, Yes, correct? that's correct. Um, which was um, a degree in history with a concentration in museum studies or public history. And um, like I said, there's only a handful in the country. Um, and then another draw for me was that um, there was a national park there. So, <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a big draw. And that's a huge park there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we used to go out there when I was going to school there. It was a great place to go hang out. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, so uh, I, I, I tell you what, Greensboro is a very interesting place. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I mean, seven colleges when I was going to school up there, lots of activities, lots of stuff going on, and really a vibrant, vibrant place to live. Yes, it, it definitely was. You are absolutely right, and Gracie is uh, liking you here this morning. <laughs> For those of you that get to see the video, you'll see Gracie over there just uh, talking to Sarah here this morning. Sarah is a park ranger with the 96 National Historic Site. We're going to be talking about some of the programs that are coming up, but how did you get from uh, from Greensboro to, to here? Well, um, the job I had at um, Gopher Courthouse was... Um, more or less a temporary, temporary job, and um, it you know things fell into place and it and it just worked out. I was looking for a, a, a new job, mm -hmm. um, new place to go, and uh, n 
the job at 96 magically opened up and um, I transferred down. So, so well, that's one of the good things about working for the Park Service, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You can transfer to different areas. Yeah, if there's a job open, I can apply for it and hope that I get it and move on to the next the next place. Assignment, yes. Yeah, it, it's, assignment. it's great to, uh, it's a, the National Park Service is a great um, agency to work for just because, I mean, you get to meet all kinds of different people, travel to different places, work in places. I mean, it's it's been an amazing um, career for me so far, and I've only been with the Park Service about eight years. So. Well, that's 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 terrific, and um, I know we've talked to other park rangers, and that's what they say. It makes it so great. But um, have you noticed anything with the, uh, I'm going to use the word, sequester? Have there been any talk of any changes that are going to have to come down? Well, unfortunately, um, the sequestration does affect um, us because we are a federal agency. Um, so we're experiencing the same 5% cut that um, other people um, or other agencies are also experiencing. Um, that has um, the 5% cut, I think, equals about um, $23,000 um, that, that we have to cut. Um, I'm not quite sure on all of the details. Um, more questions than that would have to be directed to the superintendent. Sure. Well, I just wondered if they had talked about having to, I don't know, shut down for a few days or yeah. you know, anything like that. Well, our hours have changed as a result of that. So what, um, are, so what were the hours and what are the hours? So that? we were open seven days a week, mm -hmm. um, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. Um, right now we are closed on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Okay. And Friday through Tuesday, um, Tuesday, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, we um, are open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So, you know, but uh, now those seem like, what shall I say, maybe more reasonable type cuts than just shutting something down. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've seen the like the White House and some of the other areas. They're looking at some of the museums shutting them down. You know, I think that uh, shortened hours certainly are a lot more preferable. Mm -hmm. to actually closing a place down. So uh, that's uh, that's good to hear that uh, at least for right now that's what we're looking at. And it is amazing that in 96 South Carolina we actually have a National Historic Site. That is, you know, it's a treasure. It's a great gem that, um, that you know, this community has. And I mean, it brings a lot of people um, to the area. Do you and see a lot of people from outside the area? We do. Um, we get people from all over the United States. We get um, actually, a lot of people from Canada and Europe as well. So now, how about local visitors? Yeah, we we get a handful of um... a handful. <laughs> See, this is my point. Sometimes we don't realize what mm -hmm. good things we have right in our own backyard. Yeah, yeah. probably at least once a week we'll have um, a local visitor from 96 or Greenwood um, that you know are probably in their in, in their forties or so and have said have admitted that they haven't made it to the park yet in their life so um, we're always glad for, for the first visits and sure. um, you know encourage encourage more but we um, the local community is very supportive of the park and sure. um, we we definitely love that and you know this weekend with being Easter we had a lot of local families families that brought um, brought their their visiting yeah. out-of-towners into the park and um, we love that. Absolutely. So. It's terrific. But it always seems whatever's in your backyard, it just doesn't have the cachet mm -hmm. of something that is far away. Hey, yeah. I'm Ann Eller right here on WCRS. We're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. All right. We're back here at Sharp Facets Gallery. I'm talking to Sarah Cunningham. She, of course, is an interpretive park ranger. I love that title, interpretive park ranger at the 96 Historic Site. And um, Sarah, we were just talking about off the air about some of the some of the things that you can get if you like to go visit parks or you're going to be traveling around seeing a bunch of different parks. There are some passes. I didn't realize there was a senior citizens park pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, a variety of different passes that you can get. Um, if you are 62 years or, um, or older, mm -hmm. you can get the um, the Golden Age Pass. I think it might have a different name now, um, but that gets you and um, a, a handful, I think a carload of adults into national parks for free. Um, uh, there's a disabilities pass, so, um, and then there's also um, the annual pass, which you can purchase for $80. 
Um, and if you hit a lot of the parks that do charge um, fees to enter, um, you know, that $80 is pretty affordable. quickly um, paid off. So. so sure. So you should go pro Now, um, at the National Park Sites has a website. I'm sure you could go on and find that right there on the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, um, the National Park Service website is www.nps.gov. So uh, check that out. See if there's not some ways to save money. I know one of the things that I think that uh, the Park Service has come online with doing is uh, there's one weekend a year where anybody who's a veteran mm -hmm. can go to the park for free. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So uh, lots of good things out there and there are so many wonderful things across our country. To have such a treasure right here in uh, right outside of Greenwood in 96 is pretty amazing. Now why do we have this National Historic Site right here? Well, um, 96 National Historic Site is significant for several different reasons. Um, primarily the fact that we have um, the earthen um, star fort um, mm -hmm. at 96, but it was the, actually the longest field siege um, during the American Revolution. What does that mean? Um, for those that don't know. It was a, it was a 28 day siege. Um, there were other sieges that happened during the Revolution, um, which is why we put fields in there. Um, because a lot of the other ones, you know, were water and land um, as well. So um, for 28 days, the um, Continental um, or the Patriots with General Green um, laid siege to the town of 96 and the Loyalists that were, um, had co maintained control and were defending 96. And so that happened right here. Yep, that <laughs> happened right here. It really is amazing all the things that happened in South mm -hmm. Carolina. Just, uh, you know, and then there's, isn't there one, there's one in Gaffney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Calpins National Battlefield. So uh, we have a lot of things that are right here in our area. If anybody wants to uh, find out more about it now, Sarah, do you actually have to set up a tour if you were to give a tour that had to do with this? Or? Well, well, right now, um, tours are more or less self-guided. Um, okay. You can come into the visitor center. Um, it's all free. Um, no, no entrance charge to 96 National Historic Site. Okay. Um, you just come in, you can get um, an orientation talk, you can watch a movie, check out our exhibits, mm -hmm. um, and then you can walk the trail, and it's a one mile, um, one mile paved trail. So, so, and it loops you around, the, and we've got signs around the park that you tell the story of 96. Um, at some point in the summer when we get our seasonal help in, um, we will very likely be offering guided tours, but they'll be at specific times. Sure. But don't they also bring um, um, school children over there and everything? Yes, we um, see a lot of um, we see a lot of children at the park and in schools and from Greenwood in '96 and a, a handful of um, school groups from other areas like Honey and uh, Honey and Path and Belton and in that area. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that is pretty cool. Now, what is coming up, though, on the 13th and the 14th? That's a Saturday and a Sunday. Yes, on Saturday, April 13th and Sunday, April 14th, um, we will pre be presenting um, 96 Crossroads, Revolution at the Star Fort. And um, that's one of our largest events of the year. Um, so we're going to be um, have a lot of different um, uh, military units or groups out at the park portraying they come camp out, don't yes. they? Yes, for yeah. the weekend. Yes, yeah, and so they we'll, live the old time ways, don't they? Yes, we yeah. will have a lot of stuff going on um, that weekend. So um, we're really excited about it and hope everybody comes out for it. Sure. Now, uh, you'll have, I presume, storytelling at the uh, Black Swan, is that what it's called? Yeah, we'll have um, some reenactors there um, cooking and, and talking about backcountry living and that kind of thing. Um, you have the beehive oven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. somebody will. Um, somebody will be cooking. I've been there. See, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one of the parts that I always find very fascinating is the medical part, where they show how they took care of the soldiers that were hurt and everything. They actually had a, a mm -hmm. tent set up. I don't know if you're doing that this time, but yeah. Um, I believe Eric Williams will be um, present. Former park ranger in chief over there. Yeah. Yes. Um, I believe he'll he will be talking about 18th century medicine. So. It's kind of scary, isn't it, when it you look is. back? <laughs> I mean, and they had the things to uh, cut off the leg and all this kind of stuff. I've seen some of this, and I love the bottles that they show you. And this hat, and you're going, whoa. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It is amazing that people survived through that, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that people actually did survive some of the things and some of the procedures that they did. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, 
Uh, what, do you, what do you like the best about um, all of this? Uh, what do I like best about the event? Yes. Um, one particular type that uh, really great. We have daughters. I'm sorry. Gracie, um, what do you like the best part of this? This is an interesting interview this morning. Gracie is not really cooperating with the folks. But what do you, what's the best part? What exhibit do you like the best? Hmm. That, I mean, that's kind of a tough one. I mean, um, uh, what I like best about it in, in general is actually seeing all of the planning um, that we do behind the scenes that um, see it all kind of come together. Right. Um, and, and have a great event and have um, a lot of visitors out, out to the park. Um, I guess one of the things that I, I probably like to see as, you know, if I was a visitor would probably be the cavalry demonstrations. Um, they, it, it, the, the mounted troops, the guys on horses, um, they'll be at the park um, for that weekend um, mm -hmm. during the event. And they talk about their um, swords and um, how they were used in, in battle. and Bayonets um, now, right? Yeah, and um, you know, one of the things that they do is they have cabbages um, on top of a post that they you know, will Whack charge to it. <laughs> charge towards and, and, and chop it up. So, um, I mean, that's well, one that's of supposed to be symbolic on the head? <laughs> <laughs> More or less. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. So, there's, there's, a, there's something for everybody at this event. We're going to have a lot of kids' activities. That's um, one of the uh, things that I like to um, see as well or be part of is getting to see some, some lights click on in the, in the kids' at, in, the, in the children's heads. So, it's, it's it's a really great, fun event. Um, like I said, we've got stuff for um, history buffs. You know, we're going to have a couple of authors there talking about their books. Um, the swivel gun and muskets. Um, you know, and they actually shoot their guns, don't they? Uh, they guns, yes. Yeah. I mean, their projectiles are right. not not involved um, for safety reasons. Um, but but the we do do demonstrations, dry dry fires. Um, with the muskets and, and swivel guns. Absolutely. So pretty cool stuff. Yes. Yes. And I mean, I think that is one of the problems with history is it can be very dry. Mm -hmm. But when you go and see a battle reenactment and this type of thing, it really brings the whole thing to life. Hey, you know what? I'm Ann Ellers. Time for South Carolina News. We'll be right back. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? or a college tuition hung on a wall, or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box. Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. That's right. We are right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery this morning. Hey, I'm Ann Eller right here with you. Just thought I'd give you a little weather update before we get back to talking to Sarah over there with the National Historic Site. What have we got on gold and silver this morning? Ah, looks like gold is at 1573, folks. If you've got it to sell, who knows what direction we're going. You might ought to come see us right here at Sharp Facets Gallery. The price of silver this morning is $27.30 an ounce. Why do I tell you to come here? For one very good reason. One very good reason. And that reason is because we buy things as jewelry, not just as gold, scrap gold, or scrap silver. We're going to pay you the most, so come see us today. Also on the weather here, what do we got going on on weather? Well, a little while ago it was like 43 degrees. Right now it's warming up. It's 52 degrees out there, and we are looking for a high of 63 today, low tonight of 41 degrees. So come see us right here at Sharp Facets Gallery. Get out there and take a walk. Do something good for yourself. Let's see, today is Wednesday. Is the park open today? No, the park is not open today. Um, however, you can walk in the you can walk in the park. Oh, okay. um, it's just the visitor center um, would not be open. So you'd recommend that they go out there and take a walk? Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Get some exercise. <laughs> now how long is the trail around there? Um, the main trail, which is um, paved, is is a one mile loop. Um, we do have um, a variety of other unpaved trails mm -hmm. um, as well throughout the park. So uh, 
one mile around. You could go out there, take a nice walk, and uh, commune with nature, and find out something more about the 96 National Historic Site. I am here with Sarah Cunningham this morning. She is a park ranger. She's short, but she's a park ranger. They don't have any height requirements, do they? No. <laughs> <laughs> At least not for my <laughs> position. <laughs> well, that's great. Hey, Sarah, you know, I know you're here now. How long have you been here for? Um, this coming June, I will have been at 96 National Historic Site for four years. Four years. So, or, actually, excuse me, getting ready to start my fourth year. Okay, so you've been so here three, three years. Three years, yeah. Four years. It yeah. just seems like four. <laughs> now, um, what, it, what do you look at? I mean, do you look at staying at a, at a park for a long time? Do you look at maybe looking at going to a different area? What is the, what is park rangerism set up to do? Um, I mean, it, it definitely depends on the individual. Um, I know several uh, several of my park ranger friends um, have spent their entire careers at one park. Um, I know other people who bounce around from park to park every couple of years. So um, it really just depends on um, on people's preferences. So, what would you like to do, Sarah? Um, I'd like to get in a, maybe another move or two um, before I settle down, but. Um, right now, I'm happy where I'm at and sure. um, enjoying the community. And that's cool. But I mean, I would just think as a young person that the mm -hmm. the ability to be able to go out there and uh, look and scroll and see what else is coming up and, and yeah. look for the for the future could be very interesting. Yeah, there are some great opportunities out there. So there's um, uh, think just over 400 national parks now, um, um, or sites that the National Park Service um, cares for. So. So um, now, what does somebody have to do to become a park ranger? Um, it, it depends. There's lots of um, jobs that um, require a specialized degree, such as um, biology or um, you know zoology, or to if you. I mean, some parks have electrician jobs. So um, it kind of it kind of depends on what job you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it 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 it, it varies. It varies. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just wondered because sometimes we have people that are looking for careers or changes or something to look at. But uh, mm -hmm. as a federal federal employee, I guess that could be a good job. Yeah, um, you just have to go to usajobs.gov, and all federal jobs are, are are listed on that website. And of course, they'll tell you all the job requirements and if there's any specific degree required or um, or not. So. Yeah, that type of thing. All right. Well, we are here with Sarah Cunningham. We are talking a little bit about uh, a little bit about Sarah, a lot about the '96 uh, historic site here. A lot of people from uh, Greenwood, Abbeville, McCormick, and the surrounding area don't even make it there because it's just a blip on the radar. And yet, when people come from out of town, they are amazed that right here in the middle of '90s, well, not in the middle, but right outside of '96, is this huge, huge, and all these battles went on. So coming up on the 13th and the 14th of April, Revolutionary War Days. And, you know, even if you as an adult think it might not entice you to go, think about your kids because that's what really brings it alive for them. It's the kids that really get out there and enjoy it. And as big kids as we are, you might get out there and find that even it came to life for you. I know when I was going to school, history was just like, ugh, do we have to do this again now? In the job I'm in, I wish I'd paid more attention to history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can learn so much from things that have happened in the past and where we're going today. That's right. So um, we're, we've got this coming up on the 13th and the 14th. If you're just joining us, um, let's go through. It's the 13th and the 14th. That's a Saturday and a Sunday. That's the day before tax day, just for those of you that are thinking. <laughs> the 15th is on Monday then. Um, and, and we will be doing all kinds of people coming in from outside to uh, camp there for the weekend, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a handful of different units. Um, for example, we've got the New Jersey Light um, Infantry um, coming yep. a couple all of different... All the way from New Jersey? No. Um, <laughs> I think the, uh, the ones that are coming are from Georgia. Um, you know, these... The New Jersey <laughs> ones are coming from Georgia. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, they, I mean... It, it just depends on you know who forms these groups and sure. what group or what um, I guess regiment or unit that they're going to portray. So um, 
you know, I think a lot of people don't realize the expense that people go to to have those uniforms and the buttons and all these things. Isn't that a huge part of it? It's a, it's a very expensive hobby yeah. <laughs> or lifestyle for, for some. Um, but, you know, if you're going to do it, why not, why not go all out? <laughs> sure, but they actually go back and they find the old mm -hmm. fabrics, don't they? Well, I mean, yeah, they um, do a lot of research um, to find the appropriate types of fabric and, and, and materials that were used. Um, all the way down to the stitching. Um, it, these people a lot of times don't use um, machines to, to sew their regimental uniforms. They, they haven't been invented yet, right? Exactly. <laughs> so um, it, it can be an expensive um, thing to do, hobby to do, but these people are dedicated to it. Um, just, just like me and, and other people, um, they enjoy seeing um, seeing what it does to to visitors when they're talking to them about you know bringing bringing the past to life, making making it more real and meaningful. Well, and I think the other thing is when they are uh, there at least during park hours. Now I don't know about after hours, but a lot of them they don't they don't have their cell phones. They don't have any of these things. They truly move back in time and. Uh, I expect it's kind of difficult, but there'll even be children there reenacting too, won't there? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we have um, some youth um, reenactors um, that help the park out fairly regularly, and then with some of these other groups that are coming in, um, they have their children that are that are part of it as well. Sure. So. So that's what I'm saying now, folks. So, you know, when you talk about going back, when you talk about cutting off the cell phones for a weekend, think about it. They had no cell phones. They had none of this stuff. And you'll see them out there playing with uh, marbles and, and just very simple toys to play with, too, mm -hmm. for the kids. All right. Hey, we are here with Sarah Cunningham from the National Historic Site. She is a park ranger. In fact, she's an interpretive park ranger. So don't you go away. We'll be. Right back. Right. Well, we are right back here at Sharp Fast's Gallery. Hey, I'm Ann Eller, 9.48 in the morning. Coming up on that 10 o'clock hour, you know, there's some other events. We're going to go back and talk a little bit more about the uh, 96 uh, Living History coming up on May 18th. That is another day. Now, what happens on that one, Sarah? Um, Living History Days are um, smaller, smaller scale events. Um, our, some of our local reenactors will come out and... Um, just be available to talk to um, visitors on that day. Um, and depending on um, what the reenactors' moods are, they might be demonstrating something different each week. So, um, do you, you know, do that at, at one weekend a month? Yes, it's the third Saturday um, uh, during the summer, so May through August or September, um, the third Saturdays. So the first one will be May 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And when you look at the, when you're looking at something, an inexpensive way to entertain your family, this definitely is inexpensive. I can't believe there is no charge to go out there. Yeah, that's right. It's it's all free. Um, come on out. Um, you can get some exercise. Learn learn something new, maybe that you haven't um, you didn't know before, and and. You know, it's all free. <laughs> it is all free. That's right. So you can go out there. Great uh, walking trail. I've walked it before. It's a it's a nice trail, and you get to see a lot of different aspects of the park. You know, I think sometimes you think, well, I've been there once. I don't need to go back. But particularly with this weekend, uh, the revolutionary the revolution uh, at uh, 96 next weekend, not this weekend, next weekend, and then these Living History Days, you really get a feel for what it was like to live then. So. Uh, Gather up the kids, take them out there. Can you have a picnic out there? You sure can. Yes, yeah, so you can bring a picnic. Mm -hmm. We've got um, a seven or eight picnic tables mm -hmm. um, that are available, and then we've got some benches throughout the park as well. Um, and you can picnic in, the, in those areas as long as the trash gets in the trash can. Yeah, as long <laughs> as the trash gets in the trash can. Now, how about, um, I know you probably use volunteers. Do you have volunteers that help you out at the park? Yeah, volunteers are um, an integral part of um, our operations. I mean, for these events, we we have, we depend a lot on our volunteers to help us out. And um, So if someone would like to become a volunteer, what do they have to do? Um, they have to fill out um, a volunteer application. Um, oh my God! This is like a job. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, front back type piece of paper, um, letting us know their experience, add some references on there, 
and we'll we'll review it. Um, our volunteer coordinator will review that and um, get who's back the to who's the volunteer coordinator. Tim Cruz, Tim Cruz. Um, Park Ranger Tim Cruz is a is our volunteer coordinator. So, and I guess if you had some questions, you probably could pick up the phone and talk to him and see if that's something you'd like to do. What's the telephone number? That's right. Um, the phone number is 864-543-4068. So if you'd like to get involved with the parks, I tell you what, there's all kinds of stuff to do. They even do some uh, bird watching and stuff out there, don't they? Don't yeah, they occasionally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I've seen some programs on that. So you never know what's going on at the 96 uh, historical site. Now, how do you keep updated on what's going on? Well, you tune in to WCRS. But number two, if you want some specific information about the park, what do you do? Well, you can, um, first of all, you can give us a call, um, and we'll gladly uh, tell you that over the phone. And we also have a web website mm -hmm. um, that we maintain. The website is? It is uh, www.nps, as in National Park Service, dot gov, G-O-V, slash N-I-S-I. -I. Um, and you can find all sorts of information um, from our website. Um, we're also on Facebook now, wow. so um, you can um, keep up to date with us on Facebook. We post a couple of times a week about um, different things that are going on in the park or um, fun facts or all, all sorts of things that um, go on our Facebook page, and we have our events um, listed on there as well. So. Now, um, what's your Facebook page called? Um, if you're on Facebook, you'll just um, either type in 96 National Historic Site, and the profile picture that pops up will be a National Park Service arrowhead. Um, or you can um, type the URL in, um, which after the Facebook.com, it would be slash um, 96NPS. Okay, so there you go. Just go in and put 96 uh, Historical Site on Facebook. I'm sure it'll come up. Now, you mentioned uh, arrowheads. Do you all find arrowheads out there? Um, we haven't um, in quite some time. Um, we usually leave that up to the archaeologists that come out and, and, and do work. But, yes, there, there have been um, numerous arrowheads in the past that um, were found at the park. Now, in your visitor center, you have a nice display of all types of things that were found there. Is that right? Or, or just typical of? Um, a lot of it was found at the park. Um, but then there's a lot of stuff that's also on display that um, came from Tennessee or different um, areas over across South Carolina. So, so uh, this is an interesting place to go. Now, the park hours where the park, um, the visitor center, and, and there'll be park rangers on hand, what day of the weeks are that now? Let's see, Fridays through Tuesdays. Fridays through Tuesdays, there is the, that center is open? Yeah, the visitor center is open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. 10 to 4 so if you'd like to be able to get the full-blown tour, that's what you need to go, uh, go there. If you'd just like to go out there and meander around, though, you can go anytime out there. Yeah, as, as long as it's light. As long as it's light. Okay. Yeah. No visitors after dark, folks. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that sounds good. Now, we said uh, coming up May 18th, Living History Day starts. That will be the third weekend of every month through the summer. You uh, put that down. If you don't have anything to do and you're wondering what to do with the kids, take them out there. They'll love it. Also, coming up on May 4th is a fishing rodeo. Now, this is something they used to have at the park, and they are bringing that back. Is that right? Yes. Um, it's uh, in partnership with the National Park Service um, 96 and the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. And um, it's, it's a youth program. The kids get to come out and... Uh, fish in the pond, in, the, in Star Fort Pond, and just have a blast. Yeah, so uh, that'll be going on, and we'll get more information on the, for that. But this is a good, good way to introduce kids to fishing. Mm -hmm. Isn't this part, what a part of this is about, is uh, and getting uh, dad and boys and girls out there and uh, learn a little fishing, a nice, peaceful activity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun. That is coming up on Saturday, May 4th. It's hard to believe that we are just ready to jump into the spring and now summer, isn't it, Sarah? Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to go to some place, you know, and this is the other thing is, great place to take visitors from out of town. You know, we're always looking for things to do. Great place to take visitors from out of town so you can spend some time outside the house. That's right. Yes, you don't have to go out of town. You just have to go over there to 96. It's the 96 National Historic Site. 
coming up the 13th and the 14th. It is Crossroads Revolution at the Star Fort. And the, they said that used to be called uh, Revolutionary War Days, right? That's correct. Changed it to Crossroads. Why is that? Well, um, we kind of thought about it and, and realized that Revolutionary War Days could pretty much happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and there was no tie to 96 National Historic Site. And so um, we wanted to find a way that, you know, if you say 96 Crossroads, people are going to automatically know that it's at 96 and not um, somewhere else. So, um, and we came up with the 96 Crossroads because 96 was um, a crossroads. There were, there were lots of roads that um, went through that area, and which made it um, a, a pretty commercial area back um, during the 18th century. So, um, pretty interesting when you look at how growth happens in other areas, and mm -hmm. yet 96 was really a center at that time. That's correct. So... We hope to see you all out there. Yeah, well, I'm sure a lot of people will come out for that. You always have a good turnout. Now, one of the things that I do, I do uh, remember reading about is that the traffic out there has actually gone up in the last couple of years. That's correct. Um, right now, I believe, last year we reported just over 70,000 uh, visitors to the park. So. So that's tremendous. Yeah. So that shows that people are checking out things maybe more on a local basis. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, we used to take vacations and go out of, out of country and everything. Now we look at our own country and say there's a lot of wonderful things mm -hmm. right here. So, yeah. And it's an in, inexpen, inexpensive day trip. So, Sure. So make sure you put that on your radar. Hey, you know what? I'm Ann Eller. I have been here this morning with Sarah Cunningham. She is a park ranger. She likes interpreting this. If there was one thing that you could tell us about the Revolutionary War that uh, just might wow us away, what could you tell us, Sarah? Um, I would probably say that um, South Carolina was one of the most heavily fought over colonies um, it, during the Revolutionary War, which a lot of people don't really know. Um, I mean, I remember when I was going through school that, you know, the war occurs in the north, and it's Yorktown, and it's all over. Right. And um, the southern campaign, um, the war in the south, doesn't get a whole lot of... Um, Play? Yeah, it doesn't get a lot of... Um, you know, it's not out there, and people don't know about that. And South Carolina was the most fought over um, colony out of all of the other the other colonies. And the, um, lot, lots of battles, fishes, that kind of stuff in South Carolina. So we have a history of wanting to have our guns. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> no wonder we're so passionate about our guns here in South Carolina. How about that? It's in our blood. We cannot help it. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Something else to learn here this morning on the I Love Ann Show. Sarah, it certainly has been a pleasure to have you out here today. Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll look forward to, uh, we'll be posting a podcast and a video on YouTube so you can uh, let your family know from wherever they live now and get everybody to watch it. It'll be All a right. great thing, and they'll get to see Gracie in the video too <laughs> here this morning. Hey, you know what? This is your favorite radio station right here in Greenwood, WCRS right here in Greenwood. Again, thank you so much for coming out, Sarah. Thank you. All righty. Bye-bye, everybody.